Hi guys, it's Sienna Online, and today we're looking at Hyper Japan's Christmas market, which we're able to go to at the end of November. We've had a few videos up on the channel, and we also had a blog post, though we want to do a quick talk about what we saw there and what we did. So there was tons to do there, but let's talk about each section individually. It's a massive Christmas market, so there was a lot to talk about. So first of all, let's start with the food and drink. There is a massive range of food and drink, from alcoholic to normal beverages, fizzy drinks, all the way up to your sushi for food. You've got your, I think it's takoyaki, is it pronounced? The chicken kind of fillet stuff they do? Yeah, you've got like all the um, stuff. So obviously you've got a lot of the Japanese culture being brought over. You had like sushi. There's places like Eat Tokyo that were obviously showing off their food and all like that. But obviously there were obviously stuff like, um, like my uh, Nath just said, uh, curry and all like stuff like that, that they brought over. And there's on top of that, you've got miso soup. And also like your ramen and that. It was really nice. And also, not going to lie, it was reasonably priced. Normally at these sort of things you see hefty pricing on stuff. But the Japanese um, food and drink, it was all really cheap and affordable. So it was really enjoyable. So you got to experience quite a lot. A lot of the culture there is also kept. Um, people there are happily, like, happily introduce you. They'll happily speak Japanese. Um, and everyone really is respectful of each other. At times you were given free like chopsticks to go along with your meal, though obviously they were polite enough if you asked politely, sorry, to give you, you know, forks and stuff instead, as they kind of appreciate probably. Not everyone uses the chopsticks, like we don't really use it in our culture. Moving on though, food and drink was amazingly good. We had the I think we had the I had the miso soup noodles, you had the I forgot you Yeah, had. I had one of the curries. I can't really remember the name, but it was like spot on. But that's only like part of it though. That's what the amazing thing about it was is um it was like a massive exhibition hall and then this was like one section but it had a lot in it and it was nice to experience the Japanese culture as such. But like I said, that's only food and drink. Next up we're gonna talk about one of my favourite, most awesome parts of that event was actually seeing the diva herself, Hatsune Miku, perform live in front of us by the guys uh Mirror Nero, I want yeah, to say right. Mirror Nero, I think it's pronounced. Um, they brought it over there, the sound of the future, they, they're called the Mirror Nero. Uh, we managed to have an interview with them, talking about their, uh, you know, what their project is, what their aims are, bringing Hatsumiku to the uh, UK and other, obviously, Western territories. We have an interview, which would be brilliant if you look in the description to see all about that. Though, I mean, what did you think, Craig? I mean, this is the first time ever seeing Hatsu in real life, so... Well, yeah, um, it was first time, obviously, apparently that she performed in the UK, which was such a pleasure being there. I mean, we got to speak to the head huncho himself behind it, which was awesome. Like we said, check out the interview. But yeah, being a massive Vocaloid fan myself, it was awesome to go watch her live. As Obviously, everyone knows that she is a hologram, but you know, yeah, I would swear, <laughs> but you know, uh, screw it. Yeah, she was awesome. I mean... Everyone says it's weird and that, but no, she was brilliant. I mean, it was like as if being at a actual concert. I mean, everyone that went and saw her as well had the same enthusiasm and that as us. So it's literally as if you were like going and watching somebody that you loved live. I mean, it wasn't just her. We also got to see Rin and I think one more, but I think it was Gummy. I'm not yeah. sure of a name for that one. It could be. Yeah, I think it was Gummy. But yeah, the vocaloids are incredible and Hatsune Mika is incredible herself. If you've not heard about her, go look her up and that's... I'm being serious, go look her up. She was brilliant, it was a great performance. Though, sadly, it was only an hour, though we did get to see the history of Hatsu, um, was performed to, uh, before she performed, and it was great to kind of see that her name, I think it was like, she's the first sound of the future, like the future sound of the generation, they kind of wanted well, to make yeah, it the next nice, sound. It's nice seeing, well, it was nice, obviously, hearing her history, and some of the facts that like were pouring out about her was also interesting to hear. Like, apparently she brings out, like, isn't it like 50 songs a day and then she averages like an like 10 albums a week or something she like pumps out music like no man's land and then on top of that apparently she's like the only um musician or artist if you can call her that which we are that pumps out i think it was like nine million different images a day like loads of people obviously because of fan art and everything so that'd be she's fan like, art like, and i think yeah. it would be like art covers and stuff i mean she does a lot i mean it goes into full detail all the figures are in the interview the guy does say it was astonishing to find yeah, out. Yeah, really. it was like she's she's like the most. Um, she's got the most pictures up of any celebrity on the internet. It, like, because obviously in Japan she is, and we're hoping, and obviously they're hoping that one day she'll be as big as she is in Japan in the West. Which fingers crossed she is. Um, up next was the anime and manga stores. You kind of expect these at these events. You could buy all your anime on Blu-ray from either the American regions or the UK. 
um, and also your manga. They had tons of manga. I think one of the big ones I kept seeing around was Attack on Titan, previously from Summer again. And Sailor Moon seemed to be ha uh, like heavily advertised for some reason in the manga shops. I'm guessing it's airing again at the moment in the anime in Japan. Yeah, um, obviously, like Nath just said, these sort of things, you had all your anime. I mean, you can't... Obviously, if you are Japanese and you've come over to live in England, the nice thing about this is you could obviously go and pick it up in like your home language. If you wanted to still read it in Japanese, you could pick up the Japanese version of the manga and also the Japanese version of the animes. So it basically was um, nice to see that it was uh, complementing both cultures. So there was a bit there for everyone. Then on top of that, you obviously had your merchandising for games, such as like Square Enix, I think, was there, and then Capcom yeah, was there. Yeah, they had like a big stand in there with all the figures yeah, and stuff, for sure. Because like and... advertising Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts and all like that. You had your anime stands, obviously, where they were not just selling um, posters, plushies and all that. They were also selling, obviously, cosplay items and cosplay gear. So you had your like weapon stores that were selling the replica blades and all like this. Massive poster stores that were selling like war scrolls and everything. And um, yeah, it was incredible. I mean, it was all reasonably priced. Like, I mean, I walked in there and I'm, God, like I'm not happy with myself really for not having enough money to spend because everything there was like really good. I mean, pricing was astonishing. I mean, you could pick up like, I think it was like you could pick up like three war scrolls for like 20 quid. And that was like amazing. It's a better price than the most expos. I mean, most of these places, even online, I should probably say, these go for like 50 quid sometimes. So it's brilliant to see they put the price down so low. Even I was surprised myself. I mean, we didn't buy too much there. I mean, I bought a sort of online, uh, like kind of concept art book and kind of like behind the scenes book, which not being able to read Japanese, I can't really read it, but the images are really cool. And like a, I think they're called a Miku Hako Vision, was it called? Like it's the little box things where you put your phone on top and you can like project down like an image of Hatsu 3D, like kind of visual of her dancing. I mean, they weren't too expensive. I mean, they're probably well, I mean, more up my target range. You, but... got, you got two for 15, so that's one for yourself. And no, it was like you had, yeah, you had like two in a box or you could buy two in a box for 15 or you could buy one box for seven. And then obviously them boxes had songs on them that you could watch, basically give you a live performance. But then on top of that as well, you can go and download off the internet other songs and that so you can keep the performances going. I mean, people give them out online or if you really want to, you can go buy like limited edition songs and limited songs that give her like different costumes and that. So it was incredible, but... The merchandise was huge. I mean, there was a lot there. And, I mean, they also did, like, um, cultural, like, demonstrations. I mean, they had, like, um, uh, like culture clothing and stuff. Too, yeah, I mean, you could... They had, like, a summer clothing parade, which is what they, like, wear in Japan around that time. Um, they also wore kimonos and stuff. Yeah, kimonos. And you could try your own kimono on and stuff. You could even pick one up if you want. And they also had, like, professional people, like... Chopping sushi up and showing you how to prepare, prepare we had a proper massive sushi. tuna being yeah. like cut up in front of us, which is quite strange to see this guy just cut up this massive. I've never seen a tuna so big. I didn't realize they were so big, but he was making it fresh, wasn't he? You could go yeah, try some could, if you wanted. Um, he was made. He was basically demoing how you'd make proper sushi and proper tuna and stuff. And then on top of that, you had celebrities there from like I think when we went, there was the people behind who sung some of the Naruto openings. We had and endings the I think something. it was the latest Naruto opening because I remember looking into it, yeah. and we also had one of the guys which sung. I think he also sang a Naruto opening, actually. I think it's yeah, both it was, Naruto openings for that one. Naruto. And some J-pop singers, too. Just some yeah. singers, not from anime, but just general J-pop yeah, singers. Yeah, just general J-pop. So, and there was, a, there was performances on the main stage all days round. I mean, there was Friday to Sunday. We went Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Though we wish we went on the Sunday because there was also things on that day. Obviously, at these events as well, you get your cosplay. Um, people come in dressed as their favourite characters, whether it be from anime or games, and also just dress up in general to because of the culture and stuff i mean that doesn't really fall into cosplay but you know the funny thing is with this there was just uh, it wasn't as big as i thought this time i mean the summer had a lot more people come in and cosplaying i think it's more because it's kind of that weather where you can wear less i say less clothes i don't mean it in a bad way but obviously you can wear less you can wear thinner clothes but there was a lot of people still there i mean some ones which we noticed which you can see in the things we had like dragon ball um kind of no game of life some yeah, other ones we've seen um, which there was we a enjoyed. lot of people walking around as obviously um, people from Kill the Kill, like Non Non and Suzu Satsuki. Satsuki, I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to pronounce them. <laughs> but then you obviously had um, a family bless them dressed up as Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I think one was Master Roshi, one was Bulma, and then one was Goku. Goku I think we thought wasn't it in the end. Yeah, Goku from the original Dragon Ball. 
Then you had people dressing up as obviously Shiro and Sora from yep. No Game No Life. Yeah, that was a really nice cosplay. It was nice to see because you didn't really expect. I mean, as silly as it sounds, No Game No Life we watch now, and it's kind of one of them things we watch weekly, and you don't really expect many people to know about it. You don't really hear many people that do around your way, but obviously when you see this, it's quite nice to see people dressing up as things you really like, and obviously sharing a similar interest. Well, yeah, that's what I like about these sort of places. Um, everyone's on the same basis, and you all really get on. I mean, everyone's got the same mind frame, and there's no. It's really, it's really a nice place to socialise and get to know people. I mean, no one's scared to go up to each other and be like, ah, oh, so-so, and then you can have a really, really nice conversation and get to know some amazing and great people. So I'd really push this event. I mean, I loved it. This is my first time going, and I'll probably be going on again for years to come, whether I have to pay or whether we go as press again and keep giving you coverage. Well, Happy well, Japan in general, I mean, I've been both summer and winter, and it, it offers the same content. I mean, the Christmas market's more aimed at shopping and kind of, you know, pushing up that kind of aspect. Whereas the summer's more of a festival, kind of culture festival. You go and just see what's on. You kind of get shown all the different kind of cultural aspects. But I mean, as Craig said, we'll happily go all the time. It's a great event. I mean, if you could sum it up pretty quickly, Craig, what would you say to advertise like a quick sentence to kind of tell the guys to go to Japan? Do it. I mean, you've got nothing to lose. Well, obviously, if you don't like Japanese culture, then this might not be your cup of tea. But I'm not, I'm not saying rule it out. I mean, only like two or three years ago, obviously, this was all like new to me such as like anime j-pop everything i mean i've opened my eyes to it i got introduced to it and i'm loving it i mean give it a chance give it a whirl i mean i think it was um 16 pound for a day yeah, or something good. like that 16 good for the day for saturday yeah. and sunday i think it's a bit cheaper because mm, it's sunday yeah there was like you could buy morning and afternoon tickets and stuff and um yeah it was brilliant i mean i got my days full and i loved it i'm like i said i'm going again i'd recommend like if you're going to go, I'd recommend obviously taking stuff to protect, like, bigger bags, like, because that was the one thing I didn't, I did regret when buying posters, like, they did get creased and stuff, so bring protection for that, but other than that, no, 10 out of 10, I would go, definitely. Hi, Japan, once again, was brilliant, I thank the developers, oh, I say developers, the guys behind it, the ones that obviously developed the website and also pushed out the event, as it invited us along, it was brilliant to be invited, we loved the event. It was just a great opportunity as fans now of, as Craig said recently, into anime and manga. And also, obviously, as fans of gaming, as we cover that on the channel. It was great just to be there for the whole event, and we loved every moment of it. If you guys ever are thinking of going, feel free to ask us in the comments. We'll happily answer any questions about the event. And you never know, we'll probably see you at one of the upcoming summer or Christmas markets once again. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. It's been Nathan and Craig from Seattle Online. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Down in the description, we'll also tag you to our blog post covering this, and also the interview we mentioned earlier, so you can read a little bit more into it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. It's been Nathan the Craig. We'll see you later.